What is an element? You are craving sweetness. Ever tried making caramel from sugar? You may have noticed that if we heat the sugar for too long, it turns black and bitter, unlike the sweet, tasty caramel we are used to. This is because the sugar is broken down into carbon and water vapors. Carbon cannot be broken down any further, as it is an element. So what really are elements? We will discuss this today. In short, an element is a pure substance that cannot be broken down into two or more simpler substances by chemical processes. Considering the above example, do you think sugar is an element? The answer is no, because sugar can be broken down into carbon and water vapors. Water vapors isn't an element either, as we all know that water is made by chemically combining hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen and oxygen cannot be broken down any further, as they are elements. Chemical Symbols of Elements Chemists use chemical symbols to represent elements. Each symbol usually consists of one or two letters that represent the name of the element. For example, hydrogen is written with a capital H, carbon with a capital C, and oxygen with a capital O, and so on. Some other elements need to be named using two letters. For example, iron is denoted as Fe, mercury as Hg, and calcium as Ca. As just C is already written for, do you remember? Yes, it's carbon. Classifying elements. Elements can be classified in many ways. It can be based on the number of electrons in their outer shells or the similarity of their properties. Today, we will learn their metallic and non-metallic properties and their in-between metalloids. Metals. Most metals are solid at room temperature. Some are also liquids, for example, mercury. However, none of the metals is found in the gaseous state at room temperature. Most metals have a shiny appearance, high melting point, and high heat conductivity. Are ductile, meaning that they can be drawn into wires. They are malleable, meaning that they can be hammered into different shapes without breaking. And are sonorous, making ringing sounds when struck. Metals are also excellent electrical conductors. That is the reason they are often used in the transmission of electricity, from the power stations to end users. Metalloids Metalloids are those substances that have both metallic and non-metallic properties. They have a shiny appearance. All of them are solid. They are brittle, break when hammered, and have a high melting point. They are also moderate electricity and heat conductors. Not that good, nor very bad. Silicon is an example of a member of this group. Non-metals. Non-metals have a dull, non-lustrous appearance. Non-metals are diverse. At room temperature, they are found in all three physical states. Solids, liquids, and gases. Carbon and sulfur are solid non-metals, whereas bromide is a liquid. And helium and oxygen are gases at room temperature. Non-metals have low melting and boiling points, apart from carbon. They also are poor electrical and heat conductors, other than a few exceptions, and are brittle in solid state. What are atoms, molecules, and compounds? If you shred a big watermelon with a very sharp samurai to be divided in half, smaller and smaller pieces until it can't be broken down anymore, these smallest parts are called elements. The fundamental unit of an element is atom. Each element contains only one type of atom, Noble gases, such as helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon, are elements that exist as individual atoms, which is why they are called monoatomic elements. What are molecules? Unlike the elements that have only one type of atom, molecules are formed by two or more atoms that are chemically combined. Molecules can be diatomic or polyatomic. Diatomic meaning that the molecules are formed by the combination of two atoms. For example, a hydrogen molecule is formed by two hydrogen atoms chemically combined. This is how the hydrogen molecule is found in nature and can be denoted as H2. Polyatomic meaning that the molecules are formed by the combination of three or more atoms. For example, an ozone molecule is formed by the combination of three oxygen atoms. This is how the ozone molecule is found in nature and can be denoted as O3. What are compounds? Remember how molecules are two or more atoms that combine together? Compounds are also a molecule, but those elements must be different. For example, water is a compound. It is made by chemically joining an oxygen atom with two hydrogen atoms. 
The ratio of hydrogen atoms to oxygen atoms in water is 2 to 1. Changing this ratio will give us a different compound. Composition of a compound. When we take a look at the periodic table, we can find all of the elements that make up the compound can be classified as metal and non-metal elements. The right side of the line are non-metals, and the other side are metals, except hydrogen. If metal elements are present to form a compound, it is called an ion compound. Meanwhile, if the compounds are only formed between non-metallic elements, they are called molecular or covalent compounds. Properties of a compound. You may think that since compounds are made of elements combined together, therefore, compounds will have the same property as that of the elements that make it, right? The fascinating thing is that this is not the case. A compound has different properties from the elements that form it. An example of this is that magnesium is a type of metal that burns in oxygen to form a compound called magnesium oxide. Magnesium oxide has different properties than both magnesium and oxygen. Magnesium is a solid with a silvery appearance. Oxygen, as we all know, is a colourless gas. However, magnesium oxide is a white solid. Naming compound. Naming compounds are relatively straightforward. For example, carbon and oxygen combine to form carbon dioxide. Sodium and chlorine chemically combine to make sodium chloride. And zinc and oxygen form zinc oxide. Chemical formula of a compound. A chemical formula tells us the types of elements present in a compound and the ratio of different atoms present in a compound. For example, H2O, the H and O tell us the kinds of elements present. And 2 tells us that there are two hydrogen atoms. Oxygen has nothing written with it. This means that only one oxygen atom is present. Decomposition and mixtures. There are two kinds of chemical processes that can break compounds into simpler components. These are called thermal decomposition and electrolysis. Thermal, as the name suggests, involves heating a compound strongly until it breaks down. For example, when mercury-2 oxide is heated strongly, it breaks down into mercury and oxygen. Coming towards electrolysis, electrolysis is a term made of two words. Electro means electricity and lysis means breaking down. Therefore, electrolysis is the process in which electricity is used to break down a compound. So, now you understand how to separate the elements of a compound, right? But what happens when we mix two or more compounds? A combination of two or more different substances without any chemical reaction will form a mixture. Each pure substance retains its individual chemical properties. The components of a mixture are not fixed. They can be present in any ratio. The mixture can be classified as either homogeneous or heterogeneous. In homogeneous, the components are distributed throughout and have uniform appearance. It's also called a solution. A classic example of homogeneous mixture is that of sugary syrup. Syrup consists of a mixture of mostly sugar and water. Meanwhile, in heterogeneous mixtures, the original substances are separated into physically distinct regions. For example, the cereal in a bowl of milk for your breakfast. Some characteristics of mixtures are as follows. A mixture can be separated into its original components by using three physical methods, such as magnetic separation, filtration, or distillation. The chemical properties of a mixture are the same as those of its components. No chemical reaction takes place when a mixture is formed. There is usually little or no energy change to form it. Last but not least, the components of a mixture can be mixed in any proportion. The process of decomposing compounds and separating mixtures are very useful in a variety of applications, including the manufacture of cosmetics.